There is another use of time. You know, the world, the linear world is a hoax. And we, and we put so much faith in the future and spend so much energy preparing for future outcomes, we really are taking our mind's ener energy away from the present moment. We're just getting distracted out there. Whether we're thinking about the past or planning for the future, whether we're feeling regret and replaying, rehashing memories in our mind as if they could have been different, or whether we're concerned and worried about possible outcomes in the future that we don't like. It's really a distraction away from the stillness and the freedom of the present moment. And so I thought I'd talk about something that most Course of Miracles teachers don't talk about it. In fact, I don't think I hear anybody talking about it, but um, it's called hypothetical thinking. That's the, the problem. It's not so much just the linearity, but when we're thinking about the future and imagining possible future outcomes, sometimes many possible future outcomes, those are hypotheticals. You know, whenever you're having a conversation with somebody and you're pondering a number of possibilities that could occur in the future, it's common to be saying, well, hypothetically speaking, just say so-and-so did this, or I did that, or this happened. Or hypothetically speaking, if there was a, a tsunami or, or a hurricane or a tornado, uh, or hypothetically speaking, like the economists, if we go into a recession or a depression, uh, there's you know so much energy is placed on these hypotheticals. And think of it in terms of like imagining, pondering relationships that you've had. Where are the relationships heading? Will we last? Won't we last? You know all these, all the energy that's put into hypotheticals in terms of relationships. Uh, or even it could be a spiritual community, you know, just hypothetically speaking. Hmm. And um, the thing that you have to have in order to have hypotheticals is linear time, and you have to have cause and effect apart. As if there are these real scenarios and real memories that occurred in the past, and these real possibilities that could occur in the future. It's really a it's a system of lies. It's like a cobweb uh, that the ego has set up. And there comes a point on the spiritual journey where you, instead of like, you know, we've been talking about practically speaking, we're going to join with people this week about next steps, you know, what's coming next. Um, that can be practical, but, but what's even more practical than next steps is starting to explore the whole idea of hypotheticals. Like, can they really be? hypotheticals. Uh, or perhaps is, you, some of you have heard of like Seth material and different metaphysical teachings on parallel universes. Sometimes they'll say, well you got this going on in this universe, but in a parallel universe <laughs> you have would be the exact opposite going on simultaneously. Yeah. That's the way that mind goes. Simultaneously I'm getting divorced in this life <laughs> and I'm getting married in the the parallel universe, almost like just a flip side or an opposite. <coughs> and parallel or simultaneity is an interesting kind of thing. And and what you find is that's what the teachings of A Course in Miracles are, is that that cause and effect are together and not apart. In order to have hypotheticals, in fact, in order to have past and future, you have to have cause and effect apart. And if cause and effect are together, then what does that mean in terms of time? It means that time is simultaneous and not linear. It means that all of time is, we'll say, so to speak, happening at the same time. Talk about a mind bender. <laughs> if you've been addicted to thinking time is linear and then you're like, what? It's simultaneous. Well, that's quite a, an interesting idea. Now, if time is simultaneous, then you really don't have any problems. You've just <laughs> solved the whole human condition and the 
whole conundrum because, you know, problems are always remembered or anticipated. <coughs> you never have a problem just right now. There is no problems right now. They're always remembered or anticipated. And so, if you could realize the impossibility of hypothetical thinking, how quiet and still your mind would be. Because you wouldn't waste any more time trying to figure out the future, or lamenting the past, trying to plan a better future, or trying to, to say, I wish I could forget when this happened to me, or that happened to me, or when so-and-so attacked me, or so-and-so. Grievances. What would happen to grievances? <laughs> if time was simultaneous, if, if it was no longer a sense of the past having a reality, you know, your grievances would be gone too. So this is kind of an important topic to start to see that time is simultaneous. Now, some of you have learned a little bit about quantum physics. You know, of course, years ago, you know, they, they thought the world was flat, and then there, they thought that all the stars revolved around the Earth, and then, you know, Isaac Newton comes along and says, no, it's not, there's a sun, and Earth is just one among planets that revolve around the sun. It's kind of, everything was like turned completely around from what everyone believed. And then we had Newtonian physics, which was basically measuring and uh, kind of inferring the physical laws from what was observable and empirical evidence. And then once we got into quantum physics, then we started to realize that everything that we thought we knew from Newtonian physics, which is basically everything we were taught in our science books and in our history books and everything, was not true. You know, that's, it's kind of disheartening when you, especially if you put a lot of time into learning things, to just find out the rug just got pulled out. And quantum is completely different than Newtonian. And it's more, instead of, time being linear, it's more like out of the entire cosmos, we'll say, of possibilities, that based on your belief system, your mind draws down and selects just so much, just like a tiny little sliver out of the potentiality of everything in time and space, and that's what it seems to be observing through the the human senses, this tiny little sliver of perception. And in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, perception is selective. It's so selective that you're only perceiving what you want to see. And what you don't want to see is not there. It's, that's how powerful the mind is. You just perceive what you want to see, and what you don't want to see, you don't see. You don't perceive. Uh, you just feel the emotions that you want to feel. Uh, and the emotions that you don't want to feel, you don't feel. It's like a filter based on the ego, based on the belief system of the ego, which just selects perception. Some of you have probably had the experience when, you know, you go out, let's say, to buy a new car. And if you've ever had that experience where you go out and you, out of all the possible vehicles you could Yes, you select a car, you select a make, a model, and a color. And isn't it fascinating when you get on the highway with that car, and you start looking around, <laughs> and you go, damn, I can't believe it. <laughs> because it's really, it's like, it has got to be more than coincidental <laughs> that you start seeing that make, and that model, and that color, <laughs> driving by you, and then driving by you again, and you driving by it. And it's like, what's going on here? Is this, is this my mind, or what? You know, we have sometimes laugh because we'll be in the main house over there, we'll be in there having, you know how the main house has those big windows, giant windows of the kitchen and everything? And we'll be in there and just talking and all our encounters and everything, and as we're mentioning names here, <laughs> you always, on cue, come across the screen. All we have to do is mention your name, and there you go. <laughs> we talk, 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 and then we mention another name, you and there you go. <laughs> it's like uh, the Truman Show, they're on a loop. All we have to do is think of them and mention their name, and there they go. 
every time. <laughs> Interesting. Fascinating. I mean, if it happened once or twice, it's, you could say it's a coincidence. But when you sit there all day, <laughs> and it happens over and over and over, it's like, fascinating. Just was thinking about, there they go. <laughs> like, here I am, that's me. <laughs> and so, we're going to get into a bit of quantum tonight. Because it's like, the way we've been thinking in linear terms has, you know, it's just full of guilt. Uh, you know, it's like the past, the karmic thing. The past seems to repeat, and we seem to be making some of the same mistakes again, and we can even recognize it. Like, we scratch our head like, this looks vaguely familiar. This relationship thing I'm dealing with, didn't I just, and then the time before, and then the time before, it's like, huh. It's deja vu. Here it is. It's, it's kind of like that Carly Simon song. And if you're willing to play the game, it will be coming around again. It just loops, like in the Truman Show. They're all on a loop. It just keeps coming around and around and around. I must will say scientifically, not at random at all. It's like these same patterns over and over and over. It's kind of like this idea in quantum physics of superposition that, that out of all the potentiality, and all the potential places that people and things and everything could be, the mind just locks down on a, a particular picture or outcome and selects it. And so it may seem like people are doing things to you. It may seem like the environment, the weather, all the things of earth and all the things of time and space are doing things to you as a person. But really your mind has just selected the scene to be exactly as it appears. And no two people see the same world. Of course, if you believe in private thoughts and private minds, how could we expect private thoughts and private minds? What do we expect to see six and a half billion different pictures that all are in total agreement? No, no, the ego didn't set up that way. It's, that's why we have so much fighting and conflict, is because no two people see the same world. Every person sees a different world based on their preference system, and then there's always conflict. So, in, in a sense, from that quantum perspective, you can see why in interpersonal relationships where you have two people relating to each other, and they aren't seeing the same world, conflict is guaranteed. Even if they're soulmates, <coughs> they live in total bliss for two and a half years, they're going to wake up one morning and say, you believe what? <laughs> it's going to come because of the way that it's set up. And we can say that there's only one unified perception of the world, and that's the Holy Spirit's perspective. That's why we're trying to tune into the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit sees a unified world, and there's no conflict in a unified world. That's, that's the quantum field. Everything is totally unified and connected. That's why the Holy Spirit... Uh, doesn't perceive conflict as the way the human beings do. You know, it may you may say, "Oh, I, I need a bill to be paid, but I don't have the money." Please, Holy Spirit, and then whatever you get the check in the mail, and you go, "Thank you, Holy Spirit, you you saved me, you paid my bill." You can interpret it that way, mm -hmm. but it's not like the Holy Spirit is like some kind of human character that's up there. Oh, you need some money for that electric bill. You know, that's just not the way the Holy Spirit works. It's more when you relax and when you trust and open up, you can get symbols like bills getting paid or parking spaces or those kind of things where everything flows in your life in kind of a harmonious way, but it's just a reflection of your state of mind. When you're in harmony, when you're in alignment, the whole world looks in alignment. Everything feels just right. Everything is just in perfect place. You know, Jesus says, you know, you cannot but be in the right place at the right time. You really start to feel that, that harmony and perfection of everything, and that's why we're going for alignment. There is another use of time.